wanted to share with you is how I how I have um, tried to integrate the complexity of that we're currently dealing with in the uh, investments that uh, we're doing, and it's not just me. <clears throat> it is um, what's actually happening is there are so many high net worth individuals, money owners, not banks, not um, financial institutions, but people who have reached a certain level of consciousness where they see, just like Warren Buffett, if you look at his evolution, <clears throat> that they're not gonna take any of that with them. And if you look back <clears throat> at the history of um, you know, the Carnegies and the Stanfords and all these, you know, Rockefeller, how they have evolved over time, uh, then you see that toward the end of their lives, they have done, they have undone, or at least they try to put the money that they earned to serve the society. And um, this kind of evolution is currently happening right now, but not only with the older guys as 100 years ago, but with the younger people. And so, and you see that it's happening in Silicon Valley, all these many billionaires who've, uh, you know, started the unicorns and become successful, uh, with few exceptions, I don't think Zuckerberg is one of them. Uh, but if you look at Elon Musk and others, they do, they got it. And so, this is what I wanted to share with you. There is um, a, a small group, yet not significant enough, we have not reached the tipping point there, of people who are actually putting their money where it should go. And so there are so many networks and movements, one of them is the conscious capitalism movement, and um, that are actually showing how money can be put uh, to work to integrate uh, people, planet, and profit. And um, personally, when I retired at age 40, and I've decided back then that there is nothing else I'd rather do than use money to contribute in my little way. Now, I think what, one of the most important things right now is just we cannot cons continue to invest in the same way. Even investing for those who have money and build companies cannot continue to go in the same way it's been done before. Why? Because we are now living in a complex world where we do have the UN SDGs and we do have climate change. And so for me, I thought, God, how do you do that? How do we integrate the UN Sustainable Development Goals within the climate and with uh, all the AI threats and exponential text, uh, tech that is actually threatening us? And last October, the uh, Club of Rome received a report uh, by some extraordinary people who actually provided the best way to integrate the two. Because if you look at the UN Sustainable Development Goals, you will find that they are contradicting. If you look at number one and try to, which is uh, getting rid of poverty, and do that as the Chinese have done and so many others over the past decades, be, by building a coal you know, um, a coal, you know, power plant, plant, that destroys the environment. So that's not the good way. So we cannot pick and choose which UN Sustainable Development Goals we uh, apply. We need to have a strategy that, you know, that takes the most threatening challenges that we currently have and addresses them first. Which is climate change. And so this has to happen within the implementation of the UN SDGs has to happen within the planetary boundaries, which is the operating system. It has to be sustainable. And I, this is just an inspirational thing to get you to look in this direction. I cannot go into the details, but transformation is feasible is the paper. Please download it. Um, it's uh, been done by um, members of the Club of Rome, um, the Stockholm Resilience Center, and they came up with a strategy on how to implement the UN Sustainable Development Goals within the planetary boundaries so that we do not destroy our planet. And so they came up with, um, they, how, with a strategy that's called the SMART way, 
based on the data that's been collected over the past 50 years since the first publication of Limits to Growth. So what you see here is the, the trajectory that we are, we are since 1980s. I don't know, we may not be able to read this, but um, since the 1980s, if you go on the y-axis, there are nine planetary boundaries. The top is green. Then you see that we've moved from the safe planetary envi environment toward implementing more of UN SDGs. On the x-axis, you see the number of the UN SDGs that at any one time will be implemented or are implemented. So if we continue in this on this path in, and do it faster, we will end up with still the same number, 11 UN Sustainable Development Goals, and we will not go back into the planetary, the same planetary belt. So we are still in the red, which is not good. I mean, if you look at the, the climate right now, it's just playing hot. And so this is the simulation that they did, but they came up with a smart way, and this is the one that will take us back, see, back into the planetary, the safe planetary in the green, the y-axis, the green, and help us implement as many UN SDGs as possible by 2050. And what are these? This is for politicians amongst you, for people who have influence. There are five things, and I'm so glad I can operate this locally, there are four, uh, four action items that can be and should be taken. Number one is do anything and everything we can, you know, to address uh, to uh, renewable energy growth, to save ourselves energy-wise. Number two is accelerate productivity growth on foods. We need to feed the people on this planet, and we're growing more and more. Number three new development models, learn from the Chinese, from the South Korean, from the Japanese, from the Ethiopians, what's been done right over the past decades and apply that to the countries that are currently developing. Number four is active inequality reduction and we talked at length about this. Um, as a politician, I think politicians amongst us can probably do more than I can do as an investor. And number five is what we talked also in Belgrade, is education, um, particularly in girls, investment in well-being, because the difference between a 12-year education for a girl and a no education whatsoever are 4.5 children. That's the carbon footprint. And so this is what informs me as a very humble investor. I'm not a billionaire when I make my investment. And this is what's currently happening with many, many high net worth individuals who are putting their money where their mouth is to try to show, to show a path of better investing and better company building. And we, we talked about this sustainable finance. So I'm uh, very active with the Club of Rome and so is Gary. At the European level, there is this initiative and this is something important for us for the future of capital. The EU commission under uh, von der Leyen is actually implementing this. So there's a taxonomy, a benchmarks, and so many other things. If you don't know about this, go and do the search. I'll be happy to provide the links. And I am extremely active in there too, but also I'm active on the ground because what's actually happening on the ground, meaning in building companies, creating jobs, showing how it can be done. So what we have here is the need for integration of the old structure, which is on the left, it's traditional investing, that focuses on, on uh, bringing in as high as profit as possible. And again, the system cannot change because this is the rule of the day. We are going after profit at the expense of people and planet and happiness and joy. Now, all the time, traditional philanthropy try to overcome that more or less successful. But since the 1980s, there's a movement that's called impact investing by driven by high net worth individuals who say, well, no, I want to invest with my values because I believe in something else. And so impact investing was born in the United States. And of course, whatever the US does is extremely important for the world economy. 
However, if you look at the details of impact investors, you will find that even within there, there is a discrepancy where people, some of them say financial first, it has to be financially sustainable, and the others say no, impact first. And of course, the truth is everything. There is, we need to get rid of schizophrenia. This is schizophrenia. So there is this integral model, people, planet, and profit. And by the way, the selfish gene is important. I want to be happy doing this. Why? Because it builds on top of the other. There is a good reason for us to be selfish. If somebody tells me to jump in the ocean, I won't do it because there is self-preservation. So we're building on top of the other. But this doesn't mean that my values are driven by my egocentric being. Right? So the integration is the answer. So in terms of how that occurs in investing and how we are doing it, or those impact investors, or people kind of with individuals personally, how we do it is broken down by you know the decision how to make an investment at the time when we have several entrepreneurs in the room. So step one is the traditional way. And we decided to get rid of the lying. And I'm talking here about early stage investing only. What's really occurring in the market is that you find two liars standing in front of each other. It's the, the venture capitalist who is lying to the general partner saying, oh, I'm going to deliver you the unicorn. And then there is the entrepreneur who is lying to the venture capitalist and say, I'm going to deliver to you the J stick. And if you step in and say, well, I want to, that's money is not important. Let's talk about the motivation. Why are you doing this? What values? What, what is the truth in this? Because you're not going to be able to work day and night for money only. Nobody does that. And then all of a sudden, the lying gets out of the picture. And you go into step two. Why are you doing this? And here's where this UNSDG within planetary boundaries comes in. If you say you care about the environment, you care about the social impact, how are you going to measure that? And there are so many measurement criteria. Metrics are important. Because otherwise, how do we know that we're delivering what we're promising? And so that's step two. I'm not going to go into the details. Step three is you have to make sure that if you make an investment, and they invest in me as well, because it's not about us versus them. It's not money versus the entrepreneur. It's us together. So we want to be in a room with people that we love. We want together to develop something. So we assess each other individually and as a team. And this gene psychology, these, in, uh, these tools are available for us to use, but have not entered the traditional capital market. And the way we do business, we need to integrate that. So this is a contribution that you can bring. And of course, based on that, the decision is being made. And now I'm coming to the end. We're searching for the top, those who entrepreneurs who have a world-centric view of the world, who represent the values that we all want to implement here because we don't have time for the evolution, for everyone to get there. And of course, this is the numbers. The numbers shows it. Everyone, I'm sure, those economists in the room know uh, good to great. Um, companies. This is what the Conscious Capitalism Group is doing. They have shown that if you, this is very simple, good to great, they look at leadership criteria and they already bring in, if you take good leadership criteria in your company, you already bring in three times better returns of investment. And money actually gets people's attention, even of those who are not at a world centric uh, worldview. If, if you look at uh, firms of endearment, is a research that's been done by uh, Raj Sisodia, is uh, uh, who together decided the conscious capitalism movement with um, John Mackey, the founder of Whole Foods. Who knows Whole Foods? Yeah. Yeah. So look at the data. The, the data is available. And of course, if you look at, in my case, and I'm not trying to impress you. I'm trying to impress upon you that if you invest, it doesn't matter what, in what you invest, 
in a holistic way, in an integral way, you eliminate your risks and the financial return, in my case, is almost seven times. So the, it pays off to bring in an integral, an integral way of uh, measuring your success financially. And here is the data, and this is my last slide, it's data from, from this from the endurance book. So the data shows the financial returns pays off to, uh, to integrate people, client, and profit. So this is my presentation. Thank you very much.